Yo, what's up, baby? It's Forty from Can't Stop Art. So today we are going to recreate this piece. Well, actually, we're gonna do it a little better. I played with a few ideas to come up with this Rick and Morty uh, inspired kind of uh, theme where they're on some crazy planet with a crazy sky that's lots of different colors. We're gonna change this planet into a uh, into an ice cream cone. <laughs> it's still gonna be a planet, but it's gonna be an ice cream cone planet. You'll see what I'm talking about. This uses lots of different techniques. Why don't we just get started? I'll move this over to the side. I have a new canvas board. This one's a little bit bigger, nine by 12 inch. I'll go ahead and flip it over. I'll score it with the X-Acto blade. And the first thing that we are gonna do is we're gonna recreate this background. Let me bring this canvas board back so you can look at it while I'm opening this up. Basically, the way I created that background was by using fluid acrylics. Fluid acrylics are basically low viscosity uh, acrylic paint that be, uh, mixed with an acrylic emulsion that allows it to flow a lot, right? So this is one of those things, oof, and there's still adhesive from yesterday's tutorial on this thing. Anyway, this is one of those things that you play with, you experiment with. Are we gonna have this same exact uh, background? For sure, no, but let's play with it. I have on these sides my uh, fluid acrylics. These things are not cheap, unfortunately. I think they're like, uh, I don't know, 12 euros or something for a bottle. But anyway, uh, a little goes a long way, kind of. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna squirt a bunch of it on here. We're gonna move it around. In fact, I'm gonna use the edge of this uh, paintbrush to help move it as well. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens. So let's take some regular non-fluorescent uh, inks and start with those. So I'm just gonna spray this, or spray, squirt this on, right? Is there any rhyme or reason here? Not exactly. Let's shake it up. I don't use these paints as that much. So I said, hey, let's make a tutorial on it, right? <laughs> and again, I'm just trying to show you that there's not exactly a rhyme or reason, right? Now, before we do anything, I'm just gonna show you. If I pick this up and I go like this, Look at this, this paint just goes, it just starts moving, right? And I'm just hitting it. I have a tarp here to protect. And then look at this weird design we got going already. But we can add more, right? So the idea is don't add too much paint because you can move it around. Well, add enough, right? How about some green? There, there. We don't have to worry so much about the corners because the corners we can make a border, right? Or the edges, we can, we can paint a border on it. This orange is almost out, let's use it, huh? Oops. Yeah, this orange is done, huh? There we go. So, let's do this. Let's bada bing, bada boom. And look at this, I'm making a serious mess underneath. Look at this. Now, I can take, let's make sure that I have a uh, paper towel, and I don't have any next to me, but I have this one, <laughs> is I can take this edge of the brush and I can make designs in here, right? That will show the different paints being mixed together, right? It looks kind of rainbow-ish. Now, if we use too many colors, like we're, we're on the brink of using too many colors here, what's gonna happen is it's gonna get muddy. So let's be careful. Let's add some white and yellow and call it a day. So I'm just gonna try to hit, whoops, definitely need to shake that. Look at that, that is the emulsion. There's almost no pigment in there. That's what she said. My jokes aren't funny, guys. I mean, they are sometimes. So even just the splatter on top, because there's a bunch of paint, now let's take this and ba 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 ba. Obviously the back of this board is gonna get quite wet uh, with paint, so are my hands. Let's hit this with some white and then make some more lines. Something like this, I don't know. Like I said, there's not like a, a, a right way or a wrong way to do this. We're just experimenting and maybe this doesn't come out exactly as we planned and that's okay. I mean, actually, I don't, I'm not positive how you plan for this because this is just craziness, right? 
So what we're going to do, I think because this is a up and down piece, why don't we do like squiggly lines coming down from the top like this. Boom, look at this. This looks super cool, huh? And obviously, we are going to still paint a planet. We're going to still paint a ground for them to be walking. But here we go. What do you guys think of this? I mean, that's pretty wild. We weren't planning for this, but I think it came out pretty cool. I think what I need to do, this is going to take probably one day to dry. So I'm going to leave this to dry. When the background is finished, then what we can do is we can paint the uh, planet. And the planet, I use spray paint for that. So let's let this dry. I'll be right back. And we're back. So yesterday we created this background with fluid acrylics. And these fluid acrylics are basically low viscosity acrylics, allows us to move the paint around, etc. Yesterday, while it was drying, I hit it with a little bit of brush on varnish to give it a little bit of tooth because when this paint dries, this paint dries almost like it's like a nice smooth plastic. I don't know how to describe it. So by adding the varnish, it will make it easier to paint on this. I went ahead and created this design right here in the computer. As you can see, originally I just used rounded rectangles right here, but after I printed it, I went in and I cut it out after drawing in some, uh, uh, like more of a design, if you will. This the idea is this is the ice cream planet. We're gonna put it probably somewhere like here. And I'm gonna take this outside, set it up, spray this puppy on. We are gonna be right back. All right, we're back. So we're here on the balcony. It is a huge glare out here. I apologize. The sun is out bright, which is nice. But uh, yeah, so I've got four colors here, yellow, blue, orange, and white. That's what we're going to do our ice cream planet in. I've spray, you spray adhesive on the back of this to give it a little bit of tack. I have a new piece of newspaper here for an effect we're going to go for. Let's shake this up and get started. Oh, there we go. It was the tip. Probably didn't unclog unclo unclo it enough. It's okay. I'm not clearing it between because I'm using it right away on the next can. Otherwise you'd want to clear this. So lastly, we're going to grab the white. And then what I'm gonna do, well, I should clear this out maybe, is take this newspaper here, crumple it up a little bit, and um, just press it on here. And what we're doing is removing some paint, keeping some other paint, and now we have our ice cream planet. All right, I'm gonna go set up back inside and we will get moving on this tutorial. And we're back. So we're inside now. I've got the piece. I'm gonna go ahead and peel off the stem sole. And bada bing, bada boom, we got this. This is still tacky, excuse me. I'm gonna move it over there. Excuse the glare, I need to set up another light to get some balance going on. But all right, so this is where we're at. We have this little ice cream planet going on right here. Pretty cool. We're probably gonna outline this with a Posca marker. Um, in fact, maybe we should do that first. This one's a bit big. It's a PC5M. It's got a pretty fat tip. So let's go ahead and outline this first. After we do that, I think we'll probably put in the clouds, or at least the first phase of the clouds, and we'll go from there. Now this step is definitely optional. You do not have to outline the, uh, the planet. Um, I think it will just separate it from the background a little better. So I'm doing so. And maybe if our background wasn't so busy, I would uh, skip this step, but our background is super busy, super colorful. By doing this, we're also getting rid of this slight over uh, underspray that happened under the stencil, which really is not a big deal, but just because the background is so busy, I figure why not, right? 
Now keep in mind, this spray paint is not totally dry. It's just touch dry, right? I only let it dry for like five minutes. <laughs> so ideally, you could let this dry more. However, we're just gonna move forward. Why not? It could, you don't need to necessarily be in a rush. I just wanna get this tutorial done because I have a really cool idea for the next tutorial. So I've got like a regular sponge here, right? It's cut because I use this sponge for art. So I'm gonna go ahead, come over here. I'm gonna cut a piece of this sponge off, put the scissors to the side, put the big part of the sponge to the side. Now I have this little piece of sponge, right? I have a palette right here and I'm going to make the clouds this white and pink color. I actually thought, you know what? We should add some grays in there, whatever. We're gonna do that, but we're gonna do it after the uh, sponge paint dries and we'll do it with a brush. I think that will look better and uh, yeah. So what I'm gonna do is gonna put some pink. There we go on the palette. I'll grab some white. You can do different colors. You don't have to do these uh, two colors. In fact, we could even take and maybe that's a little bit putting them close to each other because the idea is we don't really want to mix them on there. Let's take some baby blue, right? Because why not? Now we'll probably use just a little bit less of that baby blue. And you might want to have a trash can nearby. I'll just put the sponge on the palette when it gets dirty. But what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze the sponge and we're going to form some kind of thing here at the end. Look, it's cut right there. Is that a problem? I don't know. Let's just rip it off. Now we even have some different levels right here, right? Because I, I tore a piece off because I cut further or not far enough from the last cut, bada bing, bada boom, right? So we're gonna come over here, squeezing the sponge a little bit. I'm gonna dab, 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 dab. And now I have a couple dab, dab, dabs, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna lightly create some something, right? By dabbing. Come back in, pick up some more paint and boom, 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 something like this, maybe even like a, a cup, little babs, dabs or babs of blue. There we go. Now I'll come back in over here. Maybe I should have two sponges so the blue doesn't mix when I'm doing the regular bab, bab, babs. There we go, something like that. Maybe grab some more pink. Maybe a... Uh, Let's do that actually. I'm gonna cut another piece of the sponge and this piece of the sponge is just gonna be for the blue. That way we don't get too much, uh, maybe if we don't want a lot of blue like in there, then we can just do it like that, right? So now I got two sponges going. Bring some more over here. Let's create another crazy cl cloud. Now this is of course not the perfect cloud, but perfection is silly, yo. And we're going side to side Remember, no necessary rhyme or reason in how we're doing this. If we want more pronounced of pink, I'll grab some more pink. I'll dab that in. And having different uh, variations of tonality makes this more believable of a cloud, right? So don't, don't feel free to put a good amount of uh, differences in there, right? And let's, let's make one more cloud here or maybe like a couple little dabs there. Whoops, we need more pink, I think. So, there we go. This pink is fluorescent, by the way. So uh, under black light, it has a different view. And I'm gonna take some more of this pink right here. Dab, 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 dab. Dab, 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 dab. <laughs> I have no idea where I got that from, but yeah. So let's make one more cloud right here. And this one, maybe more linear, right? So pa pa pa, more pink right there, pa pa pa. All right, let's take the blue sponge or the sponge we set aside to have some blue in it. We'll pick up some blue and we are gonna press, uh, dab a few pieces of blue on there, dab a few pieces, just to add some blue to it. And this way, what we can do when this dries is come back with a brush and paint in some grays. It will make the clouds look more realistic. Granted, they're not realistic pink and baby blue and white and whatever, but uh, yeah, that's okay. And maybe we just make like a little trail. So those clouds want to connect, right? But, but they're having trouble. And maybe here, light, this is just blue and a little bit of pink. And we're just doing just a little light. 
There we go. There we go. So maybe, well, let's just add a little more. Maybe something like that. This is not, uh, like I said, there's no rhyme or reason here. It doesn't need to be perfect. Let's hit this with the heat gun and uh, then we can move on to painting Rick and Morty. All right, so thinking it's gonna be difficult. There's a buildup of paint here. That's not gonna drive very quickly. So let's move on anyway, because that's how we do it. We are impatient. I've got black right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my palette. And there we go. Squeezing out the last bits. So I got this gift from Escoda Brushes here in Barcelona. Let's go ahead and try. This is the number 12 Marfil. And this is what we're going to use to paint on the Rick and Morty on the bottom. So we're going to create some black. Uh, it's going to be a silhouette, right? On the bottom, we will have like the ground or the terrain, right? Maybe coming at an angle. Again, this doesn't have to be painted. I don't have to paint it exactly like this, but the idea is maybe like some terrain and then little Morty, Rick, and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? This, this is his trench coat. I had a friend say, is he going to the bat? No, that's his trench coat <laughs> or his lab coat. So we'll use this as a reference. I'll put it right here off to the side so we can look at it. I'm gonna get my brush just a little bit wet. I should have a uh, paper towel next to me. Of course I don't. <laughs> Let's see if we can get away without it. So I'm going to load up the brush, spin in the paint, try to get some of that off. And let's, uh, let's pick this up with a piece of tape underneath. And then this way, I don't have to worry about painting uh, against the tarp, right? So let's come down here and I'm using the other one as a, as a reference, right? Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just laying the, the line, we'll fill it in in a second. Maybe something like this. It comes up in here. There we go. Now we can come back in and paint this in before we paint the characters in. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I don't know what it is with this uh, fluid acrylics, but it's funny. It doesn't really like to accept paint on top of it. And the paint needs to be relatively thick. That's not why, that's why I'm putting not too much water on this because if it doesn't, it just doesn't want to adhere, right? To the, to the below. That's why I hit it with one coat of varnish, but I didn't wait for it to fully dry. Well, I mean, it was dry, but it was, I think I should have put a second coat of varnish. Maybe that would have helped resolve the issue, right? But yeah, this fluid acrylic does not like paint on top of it. It's like, don't paint me. Whatever, I don't know if it does it exactly like that, but that's the way, my, the way I imagine it. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Something like this, doesn't have to be perfect, like I said. So first let's do Morty. And uh, it looks like we should have probably moved this planet up because Rick is gonna be right on the planet or maybe even touching it. So here, if we come here, I need a little bit of water on this brush. So if we come here and come down, oh, this is his head. And we come down. something like that and I think his head should be a more proportion like this and coming down to this arm coming down to that arm the way I'm using the lights it's funny because it probably makes it easier in the camera but it's harder for me to see because of the, re the reflections that are happening. So, I don't know. Uh, this is not the best Morty, that's for sure. Let's paint the Rick. So Rick's next to him, and I think his head would be somewhere around there. Let's do the head last because um, it's gonna go into this paint, and I have to either wait till that dries or lay it on pretty thick, right? So if we make his neck maybe right there, then I come down, this is his body, this is the trench coat right there. 
and we're gonna make this leg come like this and this leg come down we're gonna give him like a little thing for a shoe and right here for like a sh these little nubs for the shoe right and then he has an arm that goes across here and then he has another arm that goes across here And at the end, for the, the hands, we're just making a little extra, right? Like that. Something to this effect. And maybe over here, bring it out a little bit more. Something like that. His neck is cocked a little bit. Let's see if we have enough pain here to load up. Hold on. Bah. And what we're going to do is we're going to make the head right here. This is going to come over, and this is going to be like this, ba, 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 ba. And see, we, you know, if we were patient, we'd let this puppy dry, and yeah, that would be that, but we weren't, so. But maybe that's kind of cool that it didn't dry, and we've got different colors in there now. But we're going to fix the neck, the head right there. There we go. And maybe what we'll do, instead of keep playing with it, because the more we play with it, maybe we're going to cause some more problems, is we'll come back and we'll highlight the bottom of the tufts of the hair with a white Posca when this puppy is dry, right? So while this thing is elevated, another thing that we could do, since we have a brush, is we can come here and we can hit the edges. And maybe this angle tip that I have sitting right here would be better. I'll grab it because we can come and paint down the sides. And we can give it this like grungish, grungish border, right? So, boom. Maybe I painted a little bit too much right there. Is the side totally hit? It looks like it. So as I put this paintbrush in my mouth so I can turn the canvas. <laughs> All right, come back here with the angle tip. We can even take some of the paint that's on the big brush. There we go. And see, by just pressing this in and letting the bristles somewhat touch, not touch, etc. We're creating this like grungish border, which is pretty cool, right? I know you were gonna say, yeah, it is. Let's check something. Did I paint this side? More or less, let's just hit that. There we go, we'll put this down. We're gonna get this last edge and then let's do some drying. So this looks quite, a bit different than the other one. And I think I had uh, more grandeur ideas with this ice cream planet. I'm not sure it came out exactly how I planned, but it's still, it's kind of cool. Maybe what I would do different next time. I think the outline is not necessarily the, the best part about it. So maybe I would not include the outline next time. Uh, I also feel like uh, maybe the position or maybe I should cut, have cut it off partially and just had these two drips because I don't like the fact that he is touching, right? So tap that right there. All right, so let's take, let me go, let me press pause. I'm gonna go clean these brushes and I'll be right back. While I pause the video, I'm gonna attempt to dry some of this so we can keep working. Okay, we're back. So I cleaned the brushes. I hit this thing with the heat gun. Uh, keep in mind, if you put heat gun to like a canvas board, I don't know if you could see, but this thing warps a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. And you know, that's okay. I think if you put it under some heavy stuff, you could technically fix that, but be careful. Make sure the paint's like really, really dry after a week or something like that. But anyways, it's okay, right? So uh, I thought of a few things while I was drying it. Number one, I don't like the outline of black. And how do we fix that? Because it's under some stuff, not under some stuff. And I thought, well, if we use one of the colors of the cloud, maybe we can kind of fix it. I have right here a, uh, 
a squeeze bottle or drip bottle um, that I've filled. Anyways, uh, I have a, many of these made, but this is filled with this pink paint, fluorescent paint, with uh, some, I believe I have a matte or gloss medium in here a little bit, and then I have water. So if I shake this up, it should be fairly thick, right? In fact, I'm gonna grab this stencil that we have over here, and I'm just gonna show you, maybe here in the tip, what this looks like. So I'm gonna open the nozzle at the top, and when I squeeze out, I can lay like a, well, here I smeared it, but I can lay it on kind of thick, which will give texture, dimension, etc. So why not? Let me put this back over there. And so let me try to be careful here and find places, like for example, this part of the black where we're gonna squeeze out something like that. Now this is not perfect. Look, I've squeezed out a little extra right, right here in the top. And um, you know, that's okay. The idea is just that it's too black for me, this border. So I'm gonna move this canvas around to suit my needs. And I'm going to find places where it's fully black. And I'm going to attempt to re-outline it with some texturized pink. Now, obviously, I'm not going to cover his arm right there because his arm has gone over it. There we go. I'm already liking this a little more. And maybe this place is that has some paint. Why don't, maybe we don't cover it, right? This will also look more wild under the black light if you have a black light, which I have a black light flashlight, but I don't actually use black lights in my house. So it does add another dimension depending on who buys the painting. However, it's not the main selling point. The main selling point is the painting, right? So I'm turning this around. Let's then come here. Well, let's start with this piece first. You gotta keep a constant squeeze pressure on this puppy. There we go. Now it's not that you can't see the black in any spots, you can, but it's okay because the dominant outline color is now this, this pink, which I think looks way cooler. Let me grab a paper towel because I need to wipe the tip of this nozzle when I close it. So, piece of paper towel, there we go. Because there's so much also black down in here, having that outline, it just kind of, I think it was distracting. The colors are here, separate you. I wanted the background and the foreground to be separated, so this is another reason why I chose to put the that pink outline in the, the ice cream planet or the melting ice cream planet, right? Next, I have a tube of pewter here. And pewter is a metallic color. And what I was thinking is I will sign it in pewter, but I will also use pewter to outline some of the clouds and also some of the characters, right? It's good to have some kind of symmetry. I have like a, a little cup of water right here. Let's take, I have a number two round right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get it wet. I still have this paper towel I used to clean off the, the pink. I fold it over and this way I could use it for this also. And I'm gonna pick up some of this pewter and some of the water. Come back, pa 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 pa. Sound effects always included in my videos, guys. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> so I'm gonna come up in here in the clouds and I'm going to try and just create some different differences, right? And imagine this is like the shadows in the clouds, right? So, Again, it's, it's not about being perfect or whatever. I'm just creating these squiggly lines within the clouds that look kind of like shadows. It gives them more depth, right? Come over here. There we go. And it also creates some separation from that outline of the planet, which is nice, right? 
But most importantly, I think it gives it, the clouds a little bit more depth. So again, no rhyme or reason, right? Just hitting it in a couple spots, making squiggly lines, almost like shadowish colors. I picked up some per, uh, pink right there from the outline. I'm gonna try to take that off, reload my brush, and come up here. Come down in here. There we go. Maybe right in there. Not too much in the cloud next to him because there will be pewter in him. We don't want that to be confusing or distracting. Even these, these clouds that are very uh, transparent-ish, like if we drag some in there, we picked up a little bit of this uh, pink, but try to fix that. Let's just add a little bit more up here and some more in this, this heavy area that might not be dry. There we go. Okay, so let's pick some outlines in him. Uh, I assume that the light is coming from this side down because of the sky, the moon, the, the planet, whatever this is. So what we probably want to do is outline the top right of the character in certain spots, right? So we're going to come here. Let me put that aside so I can move the board a little bit. And let's just take the front side of his face. And let's take the front side of Rick's face. Up to the hair. The top piece of the hair. The top piece of the hair. Probably could use a smaller brush for this. Boom, boom, boom. Maybe even the top part of his hand. A little bit here. The, the front top part of the leg. A little bit of the body. Right? Something like this. It doesn't, you know, this is just to add some more dimension, create the appearance that it's more, there's more depth, there's more light happening. This is totally optional. The front part of the leg, front part of this leg. We're not going to hit, maybe we even get the top of this arm, right? And a thinner brush would have been better. <laughs> let's get the front of his shirt, the front of that arm. And yeah, let's leave that, right? Maybe we can even hit some of the rocks, right? And this, we're going to be uh, not just getting the top parts. We're going to come in here and give it some grime and grunge. So to do that, we're going to just paint weirdly in here, because why not? And we're going to leave that spot because we'll sign it there, right? So let's, um, I don't know if this brush is thin enough to sign. So let me just get it wet, try to get some of this paint off. And I'm going to grab another brush real quick, something a little bit smaller. All right, this one's a little frayed, but I wonder, maybe we can get this to work better. So let's try, let's get it wet. Let's load it up. And let's see what happens, right? Boom, and we're almost done. Let me hit it with the heat gun. And what I'm going to do is add some Posca in there to make sure that this is more legible. All right, so this is pewter, but we're gonna go ahead and take a small black Posca. This is the PC-1M, super small. Let's go ahead and bring this up. And let's basically put inside of the paint. Oof, this is a little warm. <laughs> I don't know if this F is totally dry. We're about to find out. Not totally, but it's still is writing in it. That's cool. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating an inner lettering. 
we need more paint to flow. So let's get some paint on the tarp. Yeah, I think that this paint could dry a little more before we use the Posca, but we're still getting it to work more or less. I suppose I, I, I can't stress that. Usually when I'm working on paintings that aren't tutorial related, I don't rush stuff. I only seem to rush in the tutorial because there's many parts and I usually I want to get them done. So I can be getting these out every couple days, you know what I mean? Otherwise, if I take my time on these, maybe I'll get one out a week and that's not the goal. I really would like to get at least four tutorials out a week, but we'll see, right? Luckily or unluckily, I don't have that many other projects going on right now, so it is much easier to focus my time on this. However, I would love to do some commissions, guys. Anybody uh, want a commission? Send me a message. Let's make it happen. All right. So, I don't know if I love that either, <laughs> but it is what it is. So, guys, this is, let's, let's get this kind of in frame. Move the tape a little bit. There we go. This is our finished piece. It looks different than the original that I uh, worked on as an idea. Which one do you guys like better? Do you like this one better or do you like this one better? Obviously, we used a few different techniques here. Um, I did a similar thing with the planet, although I didn't use newspaper. Uh, I used saran wrap, and it doesn't break apart the paint the same way newspaper does. Also, in the clouds, I didn't add any highlights or any highlights to the characters. I used a, uh, a back of a brush to create these lines inside the fluid acrylics. I did not do that here. But otherwise, it's pretty much the same. What do you guys think? What's your favorite? Did you enjoy this tutorial? If you did, please share it with your friends. Until next time, guys, I'm out.